praise him. Christmas. I pray that family and friends were safe during that time of fellowship. I tell you, we all have a reason to praise the Lord. Again, this is Pastor Joyner and Sister Joyner coming to you from the New Covenant Church. Thank God for being with you on this day. For this is the day the Lord has made, as always. And we will rejoice, as others say, and be glad in it. So we pray again and thank you for uh, allowing yourself to be part of the, uh, I guess, the, what do you call it, telecast? We call it Sunday service. Facebook or Sunday service. Sunday service. <laughs> See, that's why I, you, you know just what to say. <laughs> Amen. So we're glad to have you here on today. And I pray that you will get out of this what God has intended for you to get out of it. We're going to get ready to pray. Bow your head. Father, we just thank you for all that you have done for us in this day. God, we pray that we will surrender ourselves to you to be able to hear you and to see what you are saying to us and be able to love you in the way we should and to have hope in the way we should. So God, we thank you right now for the ability to just surrender ourselves to you, the ability to allow you to use us to your glory and to your honor. Only you can do that. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. And amen. Again, put those hands together and just thank God yes. for the opportunity right. that is denied many, That's right. as Mother Lewis would say. All right. At this time, I'm going to bring before you, well, she's already here, Sister Joyner. And she will take it from this point. Amen. Good morning to everyone that has joined us on this morning. And hopefully you had a, a great Christmas, uh, a happy Christmas. There are so many people that was here last Christmas. And I'm sure everybody or most people in their family, whether it's your direct family or extended family, Somebody's seat, amen, was not filled. But in all things, give thanks. All things, give thanks. Because this, this is the will of the Lord concerning you. Concerning you. So whatever God do, we know he knows what he's doing. And we thank God for you. Because you are here today. And our scriptures have been posted. And we shall read them. Starting with Job 14, 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. 2 Samuel 22 and 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Psalms 91, 1 through 3. 
he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. John 15, 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Amen. A second reading of the same scriptures. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Second Samuel, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou saveth me from the violence. Psalm 91, 1 through 3. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Lastly, John 15, 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Amen. Thank you, Sister Joan. I appreciate that reading. As usual, you do a great job. Thank God for her. And I know you thank God for her as well, but not as much as I do. I just thank God for having a mate that will uh, support and will even help in ministry, uh, even at a sacrifice. And I, I think that's what's missing in our world today. Yeah, Our yeah. people don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to do what God has that's called. That's right, that's right. What it all calls for in this life. And I just thank God again uh, for your presence and for you being here. I hope, again, I said before, but I don't think uh, some people have heard it. Some people have just got on. I just thank God for you. Um, taking out time and being with us uh, throughout the year, not just throughout this day, but throughout the year. Many of you have been great supporters yes, yes. of this ministry, and I just want you to know that I don't take it for granted, and neither do Sister Joy take yes. it Amen. for granted that you uh, listen to us and That's that you right. share with others uh, the sermons and the messages and the Bible studies that we have on Wednesday with other people. Amen. This has been an unusual year, I believe. In fact, the last two and a half, maybe even three years have been unusual uh, for most of us. It has uh, brought forth over and over and over again unprecedented uh, events in the lives of both God's people and the church as a whole Amen. and right. others. It yes. has brought forth so many different uh, facets of circumstances, uh, tragedy, yes, yes. becoming commonplace, as the songwriter has said, mm -hmm. and other things that has become commonplace, even untruths have become commonplace. Amen. And so we have a world that we're living in now that is not exactly the same as it was two and a half, three years ago. We're living yeah. in some unprecedented, I say again, times. And so living in those kind of times, then that means that something has to happen in our lives. Something has to happen to us. Many of you have, God bless you, love you too. 
uh, many of God's people have come across things that were not normal. Uh, it has been uh, abnormal mm -hmm. for them, both in their uh, families and their, or their jobs. Uh, I uh, went somewhere the other day quickly trying to uh, get something for the wife to let her know that I really, really love her. And uh, she didn't want anything. Uh, she said, I'm just glad to be alive for uh, Christmas. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's uh, nice. But it's something about me uh, and my uh, love for my wife that makes me want to do what, whether she wanted or not, makes me want to do for her some things uh, that uh, she may not necessarily require of me, but because I love her, I do it because it's a part of love. Love is what love does. And I, I know some of you out there can uh, attest and be a witness of what I'm saying about that. But as I looked around me and looked at uh, the people, it seemed so strange because it was a place that I had not been in a while and uh, I had never experienced. People wouldn't ask in that particular place. Um, never thought it would be. And in my mind, I was saying, who would have ever thought that this would be a necessity mm. for uh, most Americans, because everybody's not following the protocol. That's right. That's uh, right. In our world today. Mm -hmm. But she has read the scriptures, and uh, I want to deal with a subject that is necessary at the end of this year. This is, I think, the last Sunday mm -hmm. in this year. And I believe that this is of the Lord, uh, and I want to give you the subject is be unrelentless and abide in him. Be unrelentless and abide in him. I want you to just focus in mostly on the word abide because that is the word that uh, has been put into my spirit uh, this morning for us and let me just pray one more time father we just thank you again thank you, Jesus. as others begin to take in this subject, I pray that the word abide becomes a living book for them to really look at themselves and to look at their circumstances and to remember the word abide in such a time in which we're living in now. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, we recognize you as the only one who can inspire, yes. that can motivate, that can yes, give yes. power, yes, that yes. can work miracles in the lives of your people. The only one that can reveal to them the things that they need to know and the things I need to know. For I know without you, I can do Nothing. Nothing but with you, oh. all things are possible. And I praise you and Amen. glorify you. Yes. I yes. magnify you yes. even now. Where I am, I lift up my hands yes. Yes. in yes. the sanctuary yes. and yes. I bless your yes. name. I thank you so much already for yes. what you have done. Amen. And Amen. All right, we pray, and I want you to remember the word abide. All right, let's give two definitions, maybe three at most. Uh, the first word I want to give definition to is the word unrelentless. 
unrelentless. The word for this message means not letting up or weakening in strength or speed. I'm going to give you that definition again because it's important for this message. Not letting up or weakening in strength or speed. In other words, it's constant. It is ongoing. Not letting up or weakening in strength or speed. The next word I want you to look at is the word abide. This is our main focus. Mm -hmm. Abide. Abide means to remain in a place or to dwell. Again, abide for this message means to remain mm -hmm. in place. Not just in a place, mm -hmm. but to remain in place. Yes, yes. Or to dwell. Dwell means to live or to, again, you can switch it out, abide. I, it was, as I studied this word, I found out in the Arabic, the word abide literally means worshiper, adorer, mm -hmm. and devout. I, 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 I was kind of in some way uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to say the word chuckle, but you know, I was kind of, wow, God really knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in the word abide, like I say, in the Arab big language literally means worshiper, adorer, or devout. I believe that we are living in some, I don't want to say unfortunate, but I, I would say that we are living in some unpredictable, yes, yes. some cruel in some ways, times, some unexpected uh, events has taken place and sprouted up all over our world. And so I asked the question online, how do we respond when faced with seemingly unrelentless trouble and uh, circumstances? How do we react how do we respond mm. when we're faced with, I say again, seemingly unrelentless trouble mm -hmm. and circumstances? When we come up against forces more powerful than ourselves, forces that are without mercy or reasoning. Um, there is no real answer to some things that happen to us in life, some things that occur in life, and especially at the most unconvenient time in our lives, mm. uh, unexpected That's right. times in our lives. And, and as I went through this year, man, have I not went through some changes myself? That's right, that's right. Uh, both physical changes, mm -hmm. uh, place changes, mm -hmm. location, location yeah. changes, mm -hmm. uh, the way we do ministry changes, mm -hmm. uh, things that I never thought, see, and they always say never say never. Yes. <laughs> because when we say never, we find out that uh, it may not be that way. Even though we may say, I will never do this, or I'll never do that, or I'll never do the other. You don't know. It's according to the circumstances. And circumstances deem sometimes for us to do things that we really didn't think that we would do, or because we didn't even think that it would occur. That's right. Uh, but I've had that this year, and I, I, I said, if it had not been mm. for the Lord that was 
on my side. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for his mercy, if it had not been for his grace, if it had not been for his long suffering, if it had not been for his strength, if it had not been for his advice, I don't know where I would be. I don't know whether I could have sustained some of the injuries, mm -hmm. both physical injuries and spiritual mm -hmm. injuries mm -hmm. and heartfelt hurts mm -hmm. and pains, yeah, mental. Uh, mental stability. I don't mm -hmm. know if it had not, not been. been for the Lord who was on my side. And I said, Lord, how can we sustain through the things that we know is about to occur? Mm -hmm. For he said in the last days, things would come forth. And he gave us one by one what That's some right. of those right. things would be. And so that we have to deal with it, how do we respond to trouble? How do we respond to tragedy? How do we respond to death? How do we respond to uncertainty? Mm -hmm. How do we respond to fear? Lord, a lot of this is overwhelming. And I preached a sermon, I don't know whether it was on a Wednesday or whether it was on a Sunday, but I, I, I came on and I preached about being overwhelmed yeah, yeah, yeah. with the things that uh, were occurring in the lives of people all over the world. And many times we can be in some ways overwhelmed by circumstances and overwhelmed by events that happens in our life. There is a person that I want to talk about who God has placed in our uh, scriptures, mm -hmm. in the Bible, for us to read and for us to understand. And as a testimony, I believe that Job mm -hmm. was written for us. I, I know it was written for me. I, I, I can't really testify for anyone else, but it was written, I know, for mm -hmm. me because I found myself many times in some of, not all, but some of those yes, yes. circumstances in which he had to endure. And he had to endure those circumstances mm -hmm. in the course of a year. That's there were so many different things that yes, uh, yes. changed Job's life forever. That's right. In his, you know, in his, uh, in his time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why I use Job 14, 14. And Job in the first uh, verse of, of chapter 14 says, uh, man born of a woman is of, I think that's where he began it, mm -hmm. is of a few days mm -hmm. and uh, full of trouble. And then he went down the list and he even got to a place where he said a tree yes. has more hope than I do. <laughs> <laughs> he said a tree, not only a tree, but a tree that is rooted up. <laughs> he said and cut down has more seemingly, no such saying seemingly, at that time he said has more hope than I do mm -hmm. because of the circumstances that surrounded him, because of the events that happened in his life. That's how uh, bad it was mm -hmm. in his life. Yeah. Uh, but he relentlessly... Stuck in there and hung in there. He relentlessly, in other words, uh, 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 he didn't let it let up That's in right. believing and trusting God. He he didn't let it weaken his faith. He would not curse God and die. But in verse fourteen, he says to himself, "If a man die, if if I am to 
fade away and leave this world, shall he live again? Or shall, and actually he was talking to himself, mm -hmm. shall I live again? And then he, 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 he pauses, and in the midst of all of that, he says, all the days of my appointed time, because yes. he knew that he would one day yes. leave this world. We know that one day we shall leave this That's world. Right. But, but while we are here, he says, while I am here, the appointed time in which God has given me to be here, I will wait till my change come. In other words, he was saying, I will abide in him and he yes. in me. I will not yes. leave my faith. That's I will right. not stop trusting That's him. Right. But instead, in the midst of all of the uncertainty, in the midst of all of the trouble, in the midst of the confusion in life, in the midst of of all of the death all around me, in the midst of my sickness, in the midst of my frustration, I am going to wait. Remain in place. <laughs> I will remain mm -hmm. in place. I will not stop yeah. doing yeah. what I've been doing mm -hmm. when it comes to the Almighty God. I will remain faithful. I will, oh God, I, I'm getting ready to really go off now, but let me, let me just kind of <laughs> calm down a little bit here because this is, this is some good. This is good food for your soul. This is good food for when you're discouraged. This is good food for when you're almost giving up. This is good food for when you're frustrated. This is good food for when you begin to doubt or you begin to uh, uh, get angry. It is good food when you don't know where to turn to. You can turn to him. So in his word, he gives us this testimony uh, from Job. And, and Job, in the last days of his time, God gave him more than he had before. God turned his situation around. God gave him what he needed to make the life good for himself at the end. And I know some of you may say, I don't know how life can ever be good again. Uh, and, and I'm sure in many of your lives, you said to yourself, um, dog, how, all of this that's done, dog, where I get that from? <laughs> all of this that's done happen in my life. How can yes. I move forward? How can yes. I keep going? This this is some serious stuff in my life. These are serious changes That's right. in my life. Serious. How can I go into 2022 like this? How, 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 how can I make good <laughs> on all of the bad <laughs> that has happened in my life? God told me to tell you, no matter where you are, and even the things that's going to happen in your future are bad. Stay put. Stay put. Mm -hmm. Remain in place. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy, help mm -hmm. me. How do I respond? Job responded by saying, I will wait. Mm. All the days of my appointed time. Mm -hmm. I will wait till my change comes. That's a sermon within itself. David picks up, and David uh, picks up and in, in 2 Samuel 22 and 3. He gives us how to survive catastrophic events. Okay. He gives us how to get over uncertainty. He gives us how to uh, remain mm -hmm. and how to respond to those type of events and circumstances. And we know what happened in his life. It was, it was uh, 
very difficult for him in his life. He had a hard time dealing with the things uh, that the enemy was trying to hinder in his life, trying to kill him, trying to snuff him out. Uh, even though God had called him to do a work. Let me say something to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whatever God has called you to do in life, don't allow anyone or anything or any event to cause you to get out of him. Mm -hmm. Stay in place. Don't allow the enemy to remove you. Now, if God tell you to shake the dust off your feet, all right, obey. <laughs> and move on, then mm -hmm. you do that. But don't leave him. Mm -hmm. Stay in place when it comes to what you know God has promised you. Mm -hmm. Stay in place when you know when you know what your mission is in life. Stay in place for your children. Stay in place for your husband. Stay in place for your wife. Stay in place for your friends. Stay in place for yourself. Try to get yourself in a place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you know that you will survive. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me go on. 2 Samuel 22, verse 3. This is how the writer describes his situation. And he responded with the God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, mm -hmm. my savior, thou save of me from violence. Now, what 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 was what was the writer saying to us? He was he was actually giving us. He says, in order to survive the catastrophic and uncertain events of my life, I must trust in something greater than myself. I must trust. In God. That's right, that's right. In essence, that's what he was saying. I, I can't, th this is beyond me. Let me tell y'all, COVID is beyond us. Yes. And it is relentless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if, if some of us was as unrelenting as COVID is, then we would really be able to win some people to Christ. We would really uh, strengthen uh, the body of Christ and the kingdom of God would yes. grow tremendously, but 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 we're not unrelenting. This, this disease is we can we can learn from it. Mm -hmm. It went from uh, 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 what what COVID nineteen mm -hmm. to uh, COVID to <laughs> to to what's that other one called? Uh, I, I know the last one is Omicron, mm -hmm. but the the one before that was D, the D virus. So it, it is still mutating mm -hmm. itself. It is unrelentless in its, uh, in its mission. He, it, is, it, is, it is spreading even, the more you try to stop it, the greater it gets. Mm -hmm. I believe the more we try to stop God's people, the more relentless, unrelentless we should be mm -hmm. in our uh, serving God, in right. our witnesses. testimonies, witnesses. In, in our witnesses, Sister Jordan said, and in, in we should be more so. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be discouraged, That's but right. we should be encouraged. We shouldn't be unmotivated. There's a word called unmotivated. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should be motivated. Yeah. We should say to ourselves, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will that I will. I wrote a song one time saying, I will, 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 I will. Bless your name. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's what we all should say. Thy that's will right. be done and thy kingdom come. But he said this 
in 2 Samuel, let me go back to 22 and 3. He says, the God of my rock, in other words, my solid place, is in him, and I will trust in him. He is my shield. In other words, you don't need a shield if something is, if you can sustain it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need nothing in front of you. But the writer realized that God was his shield, so he should get behind his shield. Stop trying to get in front of God. That's right, that's right. Get behind your shield. Mm -hmm. And he said, and the horn of my salvation. In other words, he sounds off when we leave off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he sounds it, the alarm and the alert when we get out of bounds. And, and, and we should want that from God. He that has an ear, the Bible says, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And you can't hear what the Spirit is saying to you if you are not abiding in him. That's right. That's you right. must abide in him if you want to uh, him to sound the alarm. That's right. The Holy Spirit in you will sound the alarm will mm -hmm. give you an alert. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. you are out of bounds. That's right. That's and right. you get inbound. Mm -hmm. Because that's all he said. He's my horn. In other words, he'll tell me when to retreat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'll tell me this is too much for you. Mm -hmm. You better cast all your cares upon me. That's it, Al. I'll, I'll for I, for I, because I care for you. You better not get out there and try to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Because it's in me you live. Mm -hmm. It's in, in me you move, yeah. and it's in me have you have your being. So don't get out of bounds. And maybe I should have named this, don't get out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of times we get out of bounds, and we be doing stuff that God ain't told us to do. Mm -hmm. But we're doing it, trying to, trying to please people, and trying to, uh, in many cases, uh, uh, please ourselves. Instead of staying in place where God has given us to stay in place, don't let nobody destroy your peace. If you have peace, don't get out of that place. That's right, that's right. That's right. Let your peace, the surpass of all oh, understanding, understand. keep your mind and keep your heart. Don't let the enemy talk to you. That's what happened to Eve. Eve allowed the enemy to speak into her ears and to show her something that she desired more so than she desired of obeying God. All right, now. And because of it, she started talking with the enemy. You don't talk with the enemy. That's right. The enemy, the enemy will chew you up. You have to know and you have to allow him. Uh, I was listening to a song this man this morning that says, uh, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. but it's the Lord. Don't you know that some battles <laughs> you can't fight alone? Mm -hmm. When it comes to God and when it comes to spirituality, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but of principalities of wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some things you can't fight alone. It becomes too much for you. And, and when it becomes too much for you, then you have to have something greater than yourself to help right. you. That's and right. many times I tell my wife when she's doing stuff, honey, go sit down. <laughs> Let me finish this. I see her, her, her tiredness and I see sometimes her frustration. And I say, baby, don't worry about it. I'll handle this from here. Many times we have to allow God to handle yes. what we can, but we're trying to prove to somebody, oh, I can take it. Yes, yes. I can do this. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't care what you say. I, you ain't going to see me fall. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not about you. That's right, that's right. If you are in him and he's in you, yes. then you don't have to worry about none of that no way that's because right. God, when, when the enemy come in like a flood, God mm -hmm. will hold up a standard yes. against the enemy. Whatever the enemy may be, it might be an event. It might be your circumstances. It might be another person. Whatever that thing, it might be a challenge for you, even for yourself. That's right. That's right. But in the midst of all of that, you got to know you have help. You are not alone. 
You are not by yourself. We can, none of us can handle all of this stuff by ourselves. All of us need help. Two are better than one. We are better together than we are apart. I try to tell people that are married, you are better together than apart if you become one. If you allow yourself to, uh, I would say, uh, collaborate mm. with one another, even if you have some differences, that's, right, that's, uh, right. that separation is something else. Ask anybody that ever been divorced, and they'll tell you that that separation is not an easy thing. It is very, very difficult. And many people all their lives get to trying to prove to somebody that I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. instead of saying whatever the Lord's will is for my life yes, that's yes. what I want and that God loves me and that's all that really matters and he will supply all of my needs according, according to his riches in glory I'm still in scripture let me go on Psalms 91 helps us uh, to give a response to these things, what these things, whatever things mm -hmm. that come about, whatever tragedy come about, whatever catastrophic, catastrophic event right. come forth, whatever uncertainty you may have about uh, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 whatever is going to come. If, in fact, we are bad. That's right. Just stay with it. Not yeah. just a bad, Sister Jordan, mm -hmm. but relentlessly yeah. a bad yes. um, in him. Unrelentless. All right. Unrelentlessly. There you go. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Not letting up or weakening in strength or speed. If we're constant. Somebody say consistent in him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, help us to re sustain uh, our motivation, sustain our faith mm -hmm. in him, remain uh, in him constantly. Mm -hmm. He said a man ought always pray and not faint. But he did say in the end that some will faint. That's because they're not abiding in him. Uh, but in Psalms 91, verse 2 starts off, says, I will say of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the writer saying this. This is his response. I will say of the Lord, mm -hmm. he is my refuge. Now, who is he testifying about? Mm -hmm. He's testifying really about his circumstances. And he is saying, I will say, this is my response. This is my response I will say of the Lord, mm -hmm. he is my refuge and my fortress. In other words, he's not just a refuge, but he's big enough mm -hmm. to take me in. He's big enough yes. to accommodate me in troubled times. He's big enough to sustain me in hard times. He is big enough. He's a fortress. He's more than just a box. Mm -hmm. He's more than just a house. He is my fortress. Then he stands and, he, and then he, he, he consolidated and says, he is my God. Mm -hmm. And then he says, in him will I trust. Now look and listen to this. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. Now look at you. Mm -hmm. Look at all the noise around us. Yes, yes. Distractions. Mm -hmm. Look at all the distractions. Look at the chatter. I talked about chatter once before. I'm going to preach a sermon on just chatter. <laughs> look at all of the different news yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 casts and all of the things that comes onto the news. You turn to one station... They're saying one thing. You yeah. turn to another station, they're saying just the opposite. Conflict. Then you turn somewhere else, and they're somewhere in the middle. So we, we got all of this stuff, and we're trying to take in. Is, 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 is this virus uh, 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 under control? Is it not under control? Mm -hmm. 
what can I catch? And what, what, what you know. How am I safe? How, how am I safe? Because everything's changing overnight. How, how am I to sustain my family? And how am I going to sustain uh, my home? How am I to sustain mm -hmm. uh, uh, the things that I do in life? When everything keeps changing, uh, how is 2022 going to phase me as a person? Will mm -hmm. I survive it? I can tell you this. If you abide mm -hmm. unrelentlessly in mm -hmm. him, don't just abide, but abide without mm -hmm. letting up. Wait abide up. Without weakening, mm -hmm. abide in strength, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and make sure that you know that the Lord is your strength, and the joy of the Lord is mostly your strength. His joy, knowing who He is and what He can do for you, and knowing that He is doing for you what no one else can do, what you can't do for yourself. I hear. Dave Ramsey, a lot of times uh, in the past when I listened to him, uh, when people ask him how is he doing, he says, I'm, I'm, I, I, what? I'm doing better than I deserve. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't understand that we could be doing worse. That's right, that's right. And especially with some of the decisions that we make in life. Mm -hmm. But we are actually, we are better than what we deserve. Right. God is good to us more so than what mm -hmm. we deserve because we deserve actually death. We deserve a lot of things that God is not even allowing to come our way or to happen to us. So we are better than what we deserve. That's the kind of God that we serve. And so since he's serving, since uh, he's allowing us to serve, we should not let up. We should be faithful to him. We should remain in place and do the things that he has called us to do unto him who have called us mm -hmm. into the marvelous light. He has called us into the marvelous light. Let this light show so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. And so this second the third verse in Psalms 91 says this, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, John come along, John 15 come on. and 4, and the Lord himself uh, through his son is speaking to us. And this is what Jesus says to his followers. He says, there go that word, abide in me. Now, he's not telling you to do something that he's not doing. Now, remember what we said the word abide means, to remain in place or to dwell. He said, abide in me and I, in you. What is he saying? He said, I'm not going anywhere. As long as you abide in me, I, as long as you allow me to be with you, mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. I don't care how bad it gets in your life. I'm going to be with you. Lo, I am with you always. So he said, it's, it, it, and I, I was reading one time uh, a, um, a quote and it was saying that God has not left us. That's right. It is us that has left him. Mm -hmm. He never leaves us, neither does he forsake us. Mm -hmm. But we can leave him. We can just decide in our minds and be, be so that we are not uh, 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 let, you know, uh, allowing God to right. do what he needs to do in our life. If we're so impatient that we go ahead of him and get out of him. That's not good. But he said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch, then he gives us a, a warning. He says, yeah. this is, hey, this is that horn yeah. that the writer talked about. As 
the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide. He uses a physical tree. As the branch, again I'm reading, mm -hmm. cannot bear fruit of itself mm -hmm. except it abide. There go that word again. In the vine, no more can you or ye, he used the word ye, which means you, mm -hmm. except ye abide in me. In other words, he's saying to us, if you want to get through all of this, you're going to have to stay in place. You're going to have to uh, have some patience. Yes, yes. You're going to have to do like Job and in, in your appointed time. He said, in my appointed time, yeah, wait. <laughs> I will wait until yeah. what? My change, change come. I know some of you say trouble, trouble, trouble. I know some of you are saying, is it going to ever be over? Is my life going to ever be the same? I can't guarantee you that it's going to be the same, but I can guarantee you whatever it is, uh -huh. you want what God wants for your, life. for your life. Whatever it is, they have a song out that says, whatever God will allow. <laughs> I believe I, I heard that the other day, something about a song saying, what, what, whatever God will allow. <laughs> and a lot of times God allows stuff in our life to strengthen us, to be a witness, like he did Job. Job is a witness to all of us of, of, of catastrophes and uh, of things that happen that are unusual. It's unusual for all of that to happen to a person in one year. Uh -huh. But Job survived it, and he, uh, he didn't leave God because of it. In fact, one of his reactions was to rent his clothes, shave his head, and bow down and worship. Now remember what I told you a bad means in the Arabic, um, in the Arabic language. It means literally worshiper. And that's what Job did. Job worshiped. He bowed down. He rent his clothes, shaved his head, bowed down, and he abided in him. He worshiped. And so the word does mean also to worship, adore, and devout, to be devout. And Job was all of that. He did all of that. David did all of that. The song is... Say, I will bless the Lord at all. at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. The song is saying, oh, magnify the, the Lord, Lord and with me, and let us what? Exalt. Exalt his name how? Together. Together. I was wondering how all of those songs that in, that's in songs, how did they turn out with all this I will? And all of this, uh, you know, bless the Lord, oh my soul, let all that was in me, bless his holy name. How, 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 in all of the trouble that he was in, what he was really doing is abiding mm -hmm. in him. He was abiding in him. I'm going to say it one, one more time. He was abiding in him. Yeah. So I'm saying to you, in my closing, when things seem to be crumbling around you and seem to be caving in all around you. And there seems to be no help coming to change the circumstances. Remember this, the same thing that Job did, you got to do. You, you got to worship and you got to respond to the enemy with this. With your circumstances with this. In my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. You got to abide. And again, you got to continue to praise him. You got to continue to dwell in the secret place of the most high. You got to Keep on lifting up the name 
of Jesus. You've got to keep on singing his praises. You've got to find a place in him and hide yourself. In him we live. And it says in him we move and in him we have our being. Abide in him. This year That's right. is the end of the year. But that for us abiding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because all of the rest of this year, whether it's one day, two day, three day, whatever it is, we're going to continue to abide. We're going to remain in place. And when next year come, if God delay his coming and God allows us to be here, we're going to continue yes, to yes. abide. Unrelentlessly abiding in him. We're going to do that. Remember our subject again? Be relentless and abide in him. When you go see somebody today, and even you can type it on here. You can type abide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever you yeah. do. That, that is one way <laughs> to respond. I'm going to what? Abide. It's important. When you get frustrated in the year, abide. Abide in him. And if you do it, you can believe mm -hmm. that he will keep you unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before uh, our God. So he is here for you and he will do for you what you cannot do for your self. Come on, Sister Jonah. We're going to pray. I need for two or three gathered together, touching and agreeing on any matter. He says, there am I in the midst of them. Father, we just thank you right now for speaking to our hearts on today and giving us the assurance that if we abide in you, that you would abide in us. If we would remain in place, if we would dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that you would be right there with us, knowing that you are our fortress, knowing that you are all that we need. You have all that we need. So God, how do we respond when we're faced with seemingly unrelentless trouble and circumstances, we are bad. Not any place, but we will abide yes. in you. In Jesus' name, in name Jesus. we thank you because we, we know you will show us yes. how to abide yes. in you. We will bless you. We will magnify you yes. in spite of. We will praise you yes. in spite of. In Jesus' name, Jesus. thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in with us and being part of this great ministry of New Covenant and allowing us to minister to you. I say be encouraged. Know this, that if you are bad, you can make it, even in 2022. Thank God for allowing us yes. to get through 2021. But there's more ahead, and God has some blessings for you if you will abide. Sister Joan, abide. Thank you. I will abide. You want to tell me to abide? Abide. Okay, I will abide. God abide. bless you. We love you. And we'll see you Wednesday. Oh, I almost forget. I'm going to try to do communion on the first Sunday, which is the next time you see me on a Sunday of 2022. Uh, maybe, just join us at watch night service would be good, but we'll see. 
We'll see what happens. We'll see what the Lord says. Yes. Amen. Whatever the Lord says, that's what we'll do. That's right. That's but we also want to, I want to try to do communion on, um, on uh, the first Sunday. So if you have a cup, yes. if you have some sort of bread, you can do it with us. Yes. And we will do that on uh, the first uh, of, the uh, of the year. God bless you again, and we love you. See you on Wednesday.